I think it's still shocking to people when they learn that this disease is still the biggest killer of kids in the country. It still kills more people under 40 than most other diseases. Locke was 19 when he was diagnosed with a diffuse midline glioma and passed away on New Year's Day when he was 20 years old. So he went for the MRI on the 1st of June, which was the following Tuesday. Um, and they, they obviously picked something up in the MRI. They'd found a 2.4 centimetre lesion on his cerebellum. And that was like, whew. <laughs> What? Where? How? And as soon as they left the room, he looked at me and he says, Mum, is that cancer? And at that point I said to him, no, 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 no. One step at a time. <sighs> Locke had had a good surgery, but there was a fairly good chance that his tumour would come back in a, a more aggressive state. Um, and at that point, Locke should um, enjoy life um, because there's not much more they that they could do. Mm. I, I was shocked. It's like, how can that be? <laughs> We're in the 21st century. How can you be telling me <laughs> that I have a fit and healthy 19 year old that has to enjoy life? When it, we're not making any advances with that research. There has to be um, what Locke was offered treatment wise. It was the same thing that kids were offered 60 years ago. Nothing will change if we can't fund the research. Um, and we just, we'd really love to save other families from what we're going through. We've seen really significant improvement in survival outcomes for other cancers, long-term survival outcomes. The rarity of the cancer right now shouldn't determine the overall investment. The reality is right now, you are much more likely to survive other cancers than you are brain cancer. And brain cancer is one of the worst cancers you can get in terms of your survival outcome over a five-year period. If we used that as the metric for investment, well, we would significantly increase the funding to generate more understanding of brain cancer so that we can drive ourselves to a better therapeutic outcome. Th that's the reality. Now, the reality is also that there's a lower percentage of people that get this cancer and therefore lower attention uh, and less ambassadors for the cause. And I think now's the time and building on the momentum of the Brain Cancer Centre, we've got a critical mass of people who are right now at the cusp of being able to take discoveries into the clinic to, to build the, the pipeline of researchers who are going to come in and have a career in brain cancer. Now a young person coming in to have a career in brain cancer as a PhD and having the security of their career over the next 30 or 40 years, the outcomes are incalculable. I'm really excited about what the future holds for brain cancer research. Seeing the Brain Cancer Centre develop over the last year and a half has been so incredible. The number of researchers we've been able to pull together, additional scientific collaborations, and really getting lots of different people who work in different fields in the same room, which has been really important. And what we've seen in this short amount of time just really excites me, and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. We launched a world-first clinical trial platform, BrainPop, which will deliver more targeted, personalised treatments for patients. For the first time, we've brought together collaborative partnerships from across the country focused on brain cancer, including leading hospitals, universities and research institutes. We've supported over 50 researchers working together across the country to find new treatments. There is absolutely no doubt that we can solve this. Solving this is not actually the question. Will we solve it? Will we not solve it? That, that's not the question. We will absolutely solve it. This is about two things. This is about talent and this is about resources or money. And if you have enough of those two things, you will absolutely create discoveries that take you towards a cure. This centre provides an amazing opportunity. Um, it's brought some of the best and brightest minds together and now they just we just need to back them. I never ever 
in my wildest dreams imagine we'd have patients on trials or we'd have you know our, our first a recipient of a Greg Lange scholarship funds I mean these were all um, dreams all I wanted was to raise a bit of awareness and raise a bit of money so to be at this point I think um, just so much hope and I think hope is what you need in a situation like this especially for something that has the statistics as devastating as brain cancer I think hope for the patients hope for the researchers hope for the families hope is what we've got now and I, I think that's a wonderful place to be Thank you.